Can cow dung stop nuclear radiation? If it could, it would be a very, very sought after material because it would then protect us against so many different kinds of harmful radiation, such as that coming from the sun, from the walls around in a house, because they contain some radioactive material, from cell phone towers and even from your cell phone itself. But best of all, in the event of a nuclear war, you could build for yourself a cave of cow dung and you could live in that perfectly safely until everything has disappeared. Well, there's a recent paper that's come out from Saurashtra University in Gujarat which claims that cow dung attenuates, reduces nuclear radiation and prevents it from passing through it. But before I tell you more about this, let me say how I found this out. Somebody called me from Karachi, a friend, and he said, uh, you are on the front pages of the Daily Telegraph, published from Kolkata. I said, me, me, meaning Parvez Hudbhai? He said, yes, go look at it. And I went and looked at it. And indeed, there was a description of this experiment. And then it goes below to say that this is exactly the kind of science that Parvez Hudbhai used to protest against in the 1980s when under General Ziaul Haq, there was Islamic science in Pakistan. And are we going back to that? Anyway, so that's how I found out. But now let's come back to this um, experiment on cow dung. So the, what they did was they took a source of radioactivity here and they took a detector here and put in between various thicknesses of cow dung in um, various forms and patterns. And they found, guess what? That the radiation gets stopped partially. They don't give you tell you, they don't tell you too much about it, but it gets stopped before it gets received at the detector. Well, marvelous, that's great, isn't it? So what's wrong with the experiment? Well, the only thing is that if you did this with paper, plastic, wood, or even a very thin amount of some metal, aluminum, whatever, you would find that the radiation gets attenuated, lessened as it passes through, and that's natural. Okay, so now let me tell you a little bit about different kinds of radiation. This being a matter of physics, I love explaining this. So there are three kinds of radiation. There's alpha radiation. Alpha radiation is nuclei of helium, and there are two protons, two neutrons that are emitted by a nucleus that go through fast. Then there's something called beta radiation, but it's really an old name for um, electrons. Electrons are also emitted from a nucleus. And there's something called gamma radiation. Gamma radiation is just like uh, light, except that it's of higher frequency. Now, when any kind of these radiations goes through any kind of material, then obviously it gets stopped to an extent because that material has got electrons in it and, uh, and, and uh, other heavy particles in it, and there's collisions of this radiation with that. Now the question is, is there something really different about cow shit as compared to, let's say, pig shit or sheep shit or bird shit or any other kind of animal excreta and common organic waste? And the answer is before you, no. They are very much the same. Everything around us is made up of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, all those elements that make organic compounds. Now what these scientists, uh, actually they like to call themselves scientists, um, I'm not sure if the world of science would agree to that name. What these people did was they um, didn't investigate other materials. Then they took the source and that source is not emitting 
radiation constantly. It does it in bursts. It's random. And that's the typical pattern, nature of radiation, that it's random. But they didn't repeat the experiment. And they rushed off, published it, and I guess they're in the newspapers these days. Well, let's come back to this later. But now let me tell you about what that newspaper had to say about me. Hmm? Why not? So they said, Parvez Hudbai wrote about um, somebody in Pakistan who had calculated the speed of heaven. And that rang a bell to me because I was 23 years old at that time. I'd just come to the University of Islamabad. That's the old name for Qaeda Azam University. And um, the chairman of our department had just published a paper on that. And this is the way that he did it. He said, look, there's Einstein's theory of relativity. Everybody believes in that. And in the Einstein theory of relativity, there's something called the time dilation factor. That factor is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared divided by c squared. c is the velocity of light. So that's 3 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second. And what's v? Well, come to that in a bit. He said, that's a truth. The other truth is that in the Quran, it is written that if you pray on the night of Laylatul Qadr, that's the night on which the Quran was revealed to our Prophet, and that is a thousand times better than praying on an ordinary night or an ordinary day. So the time dilation factor in that case becomes 1000. So 1000 is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. So great, here we have an equation that will give us v. And what's v? Well, according to the chairman, that V is the speed at which heaven, Jannat, or as they call it, Jannah these days. So Jannah is running away from us at the speed of one, of the speed of light minus one centimeter per second. So I'll leave this as a check for you to do. But there were other things that other people were doing also at that time. And let me tell you a little bit about that. So one scientist, again, <laughs> whether to call him a scientist or not is up to you, he calculated the amount of sawab, that is a reward that you will get if you pray in a congregation. And as everyone knows, if more people pray together, you get more sawab, right? He doesn't give details. I guess it was classified. Here is a formula. That formula tells you how much sawab you're going to get. Great. Well, that's not the only thing that people were doing at that time. And they're still doing it, by the way. They haven't stopped 50 years later. But uh, I must tell you about this... Um, explanation of, um, of life, life before you were born and after you will die. So this diagram that you see before you begins with phase one, which is Alam ul Arwa, the world of spirits. And the spirits are all over the place, here, there. Then you're born into Alam ul Dunya. That's the world that you actually live in, and then you pass your life, and then you die, you enter Alamul Barzakh. That's where you're in the grave, and all sorts of things happen to you. You stay there until you enter phase four. Phase four is Alamul Akhirat, 
That's it. That's heaven, hell or whatever. This diagram comes from the book Mechanics of the Doomsday and Life After Death by Sultan Bashiruddin Mahmood who founded the Holy Quran Foundation and he says that initially, that is phase one, is just like electrons moving randomly in a wire and then when the current starts to flow, it, the electrons go off in one direction, they create a magnetic field which goes around around the wire and then when the current is stopped, that's when you die. Then the radiation starts taking off from the wire until in phase four those waves, electromagnetic waves have gone off to infinity. Now there's a lot of pseudoscience which is around like this and much much more. It was there then in the 1980s in Pakistan and now in the 21st century it's in India. Let's see if there are any differences. Well, if one looks at this experiment from um, Saurashtar University and there are others like that and they are about not, uh, not cow dung but they are about cow urine, they are about all sorts of claims about plastic surgery, about spacecraft going between Mars and Earth and so forth. It's, uh, it's very much the same style but there are differences between this and the sort of things that we had earlier in Pakistan under General Ziaul Haq. But let's compare the two to see if there are any similarities or not. Well, this uh, Saurashtar University experiment is obviously wrong because you and I can go out and test it and see that it's junk, it's nonsense, it makes no sense. On the other hand, if you look at that, about the speed of heaven, is it wrong? No, not me. I'm not saying that it's wrong because um, I've never been to heaven and I'm not able to send a radar signal to it and get it back. Is it wrong to say that I'll get sawab, reward, according to that formula which the professor published? No, I don't say it's wrong because um, that's up to God to decide how much, how much credit he's going to give for the size of the congregation, whatever. And what if somebody calculated the temperature of hell? Well, would that be wrong? No, I don't know because you can't go to hell and come back. You can't go to heaven and come back. And so these are things that are untestable and so therefore you can't even call them science. Pseudoscience, maybe you want to call it, call it if you like, but it's certainly not science because science has to be testable. On the other hand, the Saurashtar University one and others like that, um, yeah, you can test and you see, you can see it's certainly very, very wrong. But now the real question is, why are these people doing this? And I think the answer is pretty clear. It's that if you go along with the government of the time and do what they say, then you rise up in the hierarchy, you get promoted associate professor to professor to dean or whatever. You can sometimes make a lot of money, you can get research grants, you become popular, you become a big man. And if you tell the truth, well then you get demoted. Now in those days, in Ziaul Haq's days, there weren't many people who were, many scientists who were saying that what was being done then was junk. I'm happy to see that three or four scientists from India have put their names and criticize this experiment, this so-called experiment. But I wish that it was not four but 400 because the size of the scientific community in India is so much bigger and they should be speaking much louder. But wherever we are, whether we're here, whether we are there, both countries are now being subjected to the onslaught of, super, of pseudoscience, of nonsensical science, and it's up for people to say, stop this, this is junk.